What's up guys, back for another video here today, and today we're going to be doing a video based on the full story of the Portland Jailblazers. I don't know if you guys heard about the Jailblazers, it was like, uh, I think it was around, yeah, it was around the year when, um, um, shit, what, when, um, Big Z was on the, Zach Randolph was on the team or something like that, and, um, I kind of forgot the story behind it, and, uh, but let's see the story. And also down below in the comments of any of my videos, comment down below what you want to see, like, kind of videos so I can react to them, you know. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, uh, let's get in this video. Let's turn this How's it going, fellas? My name's Andy. And in this video, we're going to take a look at arguably the most dysfunctional team in NBA history. The Portland Trailblazers during the early to mid 2000s, the period of time when they were known as the Portland Jailblazers. I'm sure many of you have heard people talk about the Jailblazers era and mentioned them in conversations before because it wasn't too long ago, but most people. Okay, wait a minute. Sorry about that, guys. Let me um, fix this quality here. Actually, um, let me fix it. Why not? My stuff isn't that, like... I have no idea how the team actually got that notorious nickname. I'm gonna be covering the Jailblazers era both on and off the court, where they got most of their recognition. So, first and foremost, the nickname came about because of the players on the team. A lot of them got into multiple issues with the law and they were basically in the news every couple of weeks or months since they'd get arrested pretty often doing some illegal activity or just some weird, controversial stuff. The main Blazers involved included guys like Rashid Wallace, Bonzi Wells, Ruben Patterson, Quintel Woods, Damon Stoudemire, Darius Miles, and a young Zach Randolph. Yeah. And Steve Kerr. Well, not exactly Steve Kerr. He was with the Blazers for one season in 2001-2, and years later, he recalled that it was a great experience. That was awesome. That might have been the most fun year I've ever had in the NBA, just to see the dysfunction. I see, you know, yeah, he's the Warriors coach, but he liked us better than the Bulls. I'm kidding. <laughs> of course, he liked the Bulls probably better than us. I had never seen it anywhere else. Scottie Pippen and Arvidas Sabonis were both on the team as well, but they were very well respected. Nobody yeah. tried messing with them. Anyway, let's look at what these the team Blazers was nice. players actually did that made people call them the Jailblazers. During his time with the Blazers, Rasheed Wallace had the best individual seasons of his career, but he was known for being a hothead. He'd constantly average over 30 technical fouls per season, and in the 2000-2001 to season, he recorded 41 technical fouls. Damn. A record that still holds up to this day and probably won't ever be broken, considering the NBA nowadays is way more strict in keeping the game clean. Wallace was also charged for marijuana possession a couple of times and suspended for seven games in 2003 for confronting and threatening referee Tim Donaghy. He okay. never had a good relationship with the refs, and as a result, he became an easy target. What What did you expect? You know, the man has 41 technical. Of course, this man's not going <laughs> to like the referees. For them because of his reputation. Even after moving on from Portland, Wallace was still the same guy, for the most part. Although he did settle down a bit. As for Damon Stoudemire, his time in Portland included several arrests for marijuana possession as well. <laughs> The most notable incident happened at the Tucson airport in 2003. Stoudemire tried going through a metal detector while carrying 1.5 ounces of weed wrapped in aluminum foil. Bro, what are you thinking, man? I, I don't get people like this, man. Don't be bringing shit like that, you know, <laughs> and not expect to not get, you know, you know, trouble for it. Oil. He was charged with possession of marijuana and possession of drug paraphernalia. Obviously, this is before, you know, the whole, you know, where it's illegal to have it, but. And he also got suspended by the team and fined $250,000. Shit, that's he nothing to He had to go to through a 90-day rehabilitation program and forced to take urine tests throughout the 2003-04 season to prove that he was clean. Ruben Patterson, a great defender, but. Now, this man was a beast. This man, yeah, this guy He's was a beast. He's remembered for all of his off-court problems. Yeah. 
In 2001, he pled guilty for attempting to rape the nanny who was watching over his kids. Oh my and God. as a result, he was sentenced I didn't to know 15 this. days in jail and labeled as a registered Jeez. sex offender. Jesus Christ. Also in 2001, Patterson was convicted of misdemeanor assault for attacking a man who scratched his car outside of a nightclub. In 2002, he was arrested for domestic abuse charges against his wife, but those were dropped. Throughout his time in Portland, he'd also have numerous clashes with his coaches. Maurice Cheeks and Nate McMillan. Even after Patterson was traded, he still continued to run into issues with the law, which includes multiple DUI charges. Quintel Woods, a player who's not as well known as the others. Yeah, I didn't really know much about this guy. I didn't but know. he participated in some I interesting things, to say the least. In 2004, he was pulled over by the cops and they asked to see his license and insurance. Woods responded by pulling out a basketball card of himself instead as he did not Okay, sorry guys, let me move my camera here Get it out of the way there so you guys can see the um... Okay, let me yeah, there have his license on him So yeah, you can guess that this didn't work out too well. So he pled guilty to driving without a license a few months later, it was also discovered that he was running an organized dogfighting ring in his house. The police found six abused pit bulls near his home, and he ended up getting charged what? with animal abuse. Unsurprisingly, the Blazers waived him right after this. Darius Miles and Bonzi Wells both had problems with coach. Yeah, they, these two are just. Yeah. Coach Maurice Cheeks. One time, Miles blew up during a film session and started cussing out Cheeks, and he ended up getting suspended by the team for two games. Apparently, Miles' verbal assaults were so bad that Cheeks actually considered quitting. Bonzi Wells also had some confrontations with Cheeks and the referees as well. In 2000, Wells got suspended. Bro, get your hands off Kobe, man. The fuck, bro. Suspended for a game and fined $10,000 for physically assaulting and verbally abusing a ref. In 2001, he trespassed and refused to listen to the cops when they told him to not get involved in a fight near a nightclub. And last but not least, Zach Randolph. Yeah, I don't know where to begin. Oh my he God. had a wide range of incidents, from arrests with marijuana possession, physical assaults, DUI, and the most memorable moment was in 2003, when Randolph sucker punched Reuben Patterson at practice and broke his <laughs> face. He did that because he hated how Patterson would always bully the younger players on the team. And then later on, Randolph hey, decided thing. to hide at his teammate Dale Davis's house because he was afraid that Patterson was going to go after him and try to shoot him. Jesus Christ. On top of all this, those guys weren't the only players involved either. In the 2004 to 5 season, the You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like, you know, like the fucking um the bad boy pissings like they'd be like if you fuck up if you fuck with one of the other guys they're gonna fuck you up <laughs> blazer signed ha Shung jin the Who? first and only south korean player to ever play in the nba they also drafted a player called nedzad sinanovich yeah i have no idea who ended up fuck never playing are. a single game in the nba but he was around for some of the blazers practices apparently during a practice session in 2005 ha Shung jin and sinanovich got into a huge fight they started throwing punches and swinging their elbows at each other, and just for the record, these two guys were like... Bro, like... Why? <laughs> you wanna throw punches in practice, bro, you guys... Seven foot four inches tall. So it took an entire team effort from the Blazers training staff to stop the fight. Shit. Ha ended up getting punched, and he screamed at Sinanovich that he was going to sue him. They were separated, and for a moment, it seemed like everything calmed down, but it didn't. Ha picked up a wooden pole in the weight room and charged right towards Sinanovich. God damn. He blocked the first swing, but then took another hit on the ribs. And yeah, that's pretty much what happened, according to sports columnist John Canzano. God. That's damn hilarious, and it sums up the Jailblazers era quite nicely. Even the players you've never heard of before would still get into fights at practice. It got so bad that the Blazers management made a promise to the city of Portland that they will drastically change the team and reinvent the culture. They promised them that they'll bring in players who can not only play but also represent the city in a positive light. The craziest part about this era was that they actually weren't even a bad team. They were actually seen as being dark horse contenders in the early 2000s. 
Here, look at the team's records from 2000 to 2003. Dang. That's impressive. They also made the conference finals in 1999 and 2000, which was the year they almost beat the Lakers but lost Game 7 after collapsing in the fourth quarter. It's shocking how good they were. Hearing about all of the off-court issues they've had, it's amazing that a team like this was still able play. to win 50 games for multiple seasons. It shows how talented the players were. Unfortunately, they didn't do so well after 2003 as they wanted to rebrand and build a better image. So they traded away a few guys including Rashid Wallace and Bonzi Wells, who were both very important to the team's success. And that's all folks, that pretty much sums up the story of the Portland Jailblazers. Okay, you know, uh, what do you guys think of the comments? What do you think about, you know, this uh, Jailblazers team? Um, obviously, I wasn't around when this happened. I got born in 01, so it's like, you know, I couldn't really watch this team. But I do knew they were a good team. Obviously, they were in the NBA Finals against the Lakers. Obviously, lost in Game 7. Everybody remembers that one dunk there from that game. Um, but, you know, hey. Um, I like the decision that they went into, tried to make get more respected people in to Portland because I feel like this is a res respectable state and city where it's supposed to have those kind of people. We can't just always have you know troublemakers. Like yeah, they can be good, but they can't. I don't want troublemakers on my team, you know. So anyway, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Down below, you know, put some video ideas or something like that you would want to see you know um and if somebody puts the same video idea or something like that in the comments like it but yeah again before we go i do want to shout out again uh tim thank you for the support you know the last two videos and videos past i did see some behind you know videos uh but yeah thanks for the support and uh hope you guys have a nice day peace